Hi, I'm Laura Giordana with Nutanix Technical Marketing, and in this video, I wanna walk through the NAI 2.4 install on NKP. So looking at the requirements, we're going to need NKP 2.14 or 2.15 with the NKP Pro or Ultimate license. We'll be using NKP 2.15 in this video, which is the latest as of the time of this recording. You'll then need your Docker Hub credentials that you received with your license. You'll also need to make sure you have Nutanix Files 5.1 with a read write many storage class that enables static or dynamic provisioning of NFS shares. For static provisioning, you'll need an NFS export pre-created. And for dynamic provisioning, you're going to require the CSI driver secret for authentication, which requires a REST API user created in Nutanix Files. Please see the CSI driver documentation for more information. In this video, we will be configuring our storage class for dynamic provisioning. You'll also need to make sure your NKP cluster where you're installing NAI has the required applications installed. In this video, I'm only going to be installing the GPU operator and the Envoy gateway. Uh, KServe will be automatically installed as a dependency when deploying NAI from the catalog. Uh, NKP Pro includes the gateway API, the Nutanix CSI driver, and the cert manager. And Prometheus stack is already enabled on my NKP management cluster. If you're using a workload cluster, you may need to install this as well. So some additional requirements that we won't be going through in this video, but you'll wanna make sure that you have a worker node pool with the required resources to run your desired inference endpoints, and this includes any GPUs. You'll wanna have a load balancer configured in your Kubernetes cluster. So on NKP, Metal LB is there by default, so you just need to configure it with an IP address pool and we just need one IP for the NAI endpoint. So to configure Metal LB, please take a look at the NKP documentation. Then you'll need a fully qualified domain name pointing to this endpoint and a valid TLS certificate for that FQDN. So these are the high level steps that we'll be running through. So first let's install the GPU operator. So we can do this from the NKP dashboard. So navigate over to your workspace where your cluster is click on applications and you can search or scroll down to find the GPU operator and then click on the three dots and then click on enable. If the nodes um, don't have the driver installed, in my case, I have an Ubuntu system that does not have the driver installed. So I'm going to add enabled true for the driver configuration and we'll click on enable and that'll take a couple minutes to install the drivers and spin up on the back end. So after a couple of minutes, we'll see that all of our pods are running for our GPU operator. And there are several ways to um, validate that the GPU operator is working. So we're going to run the get nodes command with some output options to see that the nodes that are supposed to have GPU are detected as having GPU. So we can now schedule GPU workloads on those nodes. The next step will be to install the Envoy gateway. So we're using Helm and the version that we need. And then once that's done, we can now move on to adding the app catalog into the appropriate workspace. And then finally, we'll go ahead and create the storage class for dynamic provisioning. And again, this is outlined in the CSI driver guide on how to create that secret and the storage class. So now we have everything we need and we can move on with enabling NAI from the NKP catalog. So coming back into our NKP dashboard, if we refresh and come over to the application screen, we should now see Nutanix Enterprise AI here as an application that we can install. So if we click on view details, we'll see the prerequisites and a configuration guide. It provides a storage class for static provisioning. Um, and it also shows the information that we're gonna need to provide when enabling the application. So we're gonna need to provide the image pool secret with our Docker Hub credentials as well as the name of the storage class that we just created. So coming up to the enable button, let's go ahead and paste in our information or you could optionally upload it as a file and then we'll click on enable. And you can go ahead and ignore those dependencies because we've already installed them or they're already installed. And so on the back end on the Kubernetes cluster, you'll start to see the services come up. We'll see KServe start first as a dependency um, and then we'll start to see the pods come up in the NAI system namespace. So now we can see our NAI pods are up and running. So let's first check the IP address that has been given to our gateway from our load balancer. And this is the address that we want that FQDN to point to. And then we can move on to patching the config map for the NAI UI. 
with our FQDN, so we'll be able to link to it directly from the NKP dashboard. And then finally, we'll create the secret for our own certificate that we have on our workstation here. And once that secret is created, we'll go ahead and patch the gateway with our new secret. And these steps are also documented on the NAI application page inside of NKP. Now coming back into our NKP dashboard, we'll come over to the cluster where we installed NAI, and you should now be able to access the dashboard for NAI directly from the application dashboard page. You might need to refresh the page after updating the config map. So now we're all set to log into NAI and start creating models and endpoints. And so stay tuned for more videos on configuring NAI and getting everything up and running. I hope you found this useful and we'll see you in the next video.